Hello. Welcome to Today in History, an AI podcast. I'm Steven. And I'm Ruth. We're the artificial intelligence hosts of this show. Every day, we'll tell you about the most interesting, consequential and sometimes forgotten facts in history that happened on this date. Politics, economy, war, religion, culture. One topic every day. Plus something that you would have heard on the news back then on this date. Also, about a holiday somewhere in the world, someone who was born and someone who died. Hope you stay with us. Please enjoy a few minutes to maybe get a little smarter and appreciate the enormity of every single day. Today is Saturday, March 23, 2024. The year is 1991. Our main topic, the Sierra Leone Civil War began with the invasion of the Revolutionary United Front, with support from the Special Forces of Charles Taylor's National Patriotic Front of Liberia, in an attempt to overthrow President Joseph Saidu Momo. The Sierra Leone Civil War, a brutal and devastating conflict that lasted for 11 years, began on March 23, 1991, when the Revolutionary United Front, RUF, a rebel group supported by the Special Forces of Charles Taylor's National Patriotic Front of Liberia, NPFL, invaded Sierra Leone with the aim of overthrowing President Joseph Saidu Momo's government. This marked the start of a long and bloody conflict that would leave over 50,000 people dead and have far-reaching consequences for the country and the region. The context of the conflict can be traced back to the political and ethnic tensions that have been simmering in the region for decades. The Liberian government, led by Charles Taylor, had been accused of corruption, totalitarianism, and favoritism towards the Kron ethnic group, leading to rising ethnic tensions and civil unrest. The NPFL, which was formed by Taylor, emerged as a rebel group that sought to overthrow the Liberian government and address these grievances. The RUF, which was led by Fode Sanko, a former army corporal, had similar goals and sought to overthrow the Sierra Leonean government, which it saw as corrupt and oppressive. With support from the NPFL, the RUF launched its invasion of Sierra Leone, hoping to capitalize on the existing tensions and quickly overthrow the government. The conflict that ensued was brutal and characterized by widespread human rights abuses, including murder, rape, and the use of child soldiers. The RUF, in particular, was notorious for its brutality, earning a reputation for hacking off the limbs of its victims, a practice that became known as amputation terrorism. The Sierra Leone Civil War had significant historical significance, both for the country and the region. It marked a low point in the history of Sierra Leone, which had previously been known for its stability and peaceful transfer of power. The conflict also had far-reaching consequences for the region, destabilizing neighboring countries and contributing to the growth of extremist groups. The war also had significant international implications. The United Nations and other international organizations were criticized for their slow response to the conflict, which allowed it to continue for far longer than it should have. The conflict also highlighted the need for greater international cooperation in addressing humanitarian crises and preventing human rights abuses. In conclusion, the Sierra Leone Civil War was a devastating conflict that had far-reaching consequences for the country and the region. It was marked by widespread human rights abuses and significant international implications. The conflict serves as a reminder of the need for greater international cooperation in addressing humanitarian crises and preventing human rights abuses, and it remains an important chapter in the history of Sierra Leone and the region. The year is 1978. On the news, the first UNIFIL troops arrived in Lebanon for peacekeeping mission along the Blue Line. Good evening, and welcome to our evening news broadcast. Today, we bring you a report from the Middle East, where the United Nations has launched a peacekeeping mission in Lebanon. The mission, known as UNIFIL, is aimed at confirming Israeli withdrawal from the country and ensuring that the government of Lebanon can restore its authority in the area. The deployment of UNIFIL troops comes in the context of a long-standing border dispute between Israel, Lebanon, and Hezbollah. The Blue Line, which was published by the United Nations in 2000, serves as a demarcation line dividing Lebanon from Israel and the Golan Heights. However, the line has been the subject of controversy, with some parties viewing it as temporary and not a formal border. The arrival of UNIFIL troops marks a significant development in the region, as it represents an effort by the international community to promote stability and security in the midst of ongoing conflict. 
The mission is the 71st peacekeeping operation authorized by the United Nations, and it underscores the organization's commitment to supporting peace and security around the world. We spoke with the head of the UN peacekeeping mission, who expressed optimism about the potential for UNIFIL to make a positive impact in the region. Our goal is to support the government of Lebanon in restoring its authority and ensuring the safety and security of all people in the area, he said. We believe that our presence can help to reduce tensions and promote a peaceful resolution to the conflict. The deployment of UNIFIL troops is being closely watched by leaders in the region and around the world. The mission represents a significant step forward in the pursuit of peace and security in the Middle East, and we will continue to follow developments closely in the days and weeks ahead. Thank you for joining us tonight. We now return you to our regular programming. Our selected holiday for today, Christian Feast Day, Gregory the Illuminator, Episcopal Church. Gregory the Illuminator is a holiday that commemorates the founder and first official head of the Armenian Apostolic Church, Gregory the Illuminator. The holiday is celebrated on September 13 by the Episcopal Church, which is a member church of the Worldwide Anglican Communion. Gregory the Illuminator is venerated as a saint in the Armenian Apostolic Church and in some other churches. The cultural significance of this holiday lies in the fact that Gregory the Illuminator played a crucial role in converting Armenia from Zoroastrianism to Christianity in the early 4th century, making Armenia the first state to adopt Christianity as its official religion. This event had a profound impact on the history of Christianity and the development of the Armenian Apostolic Church. The holiday is an opportunity for members of the Episcopal Church and other churches that venerate Gregory the Illuminator to reflect on the significance of his work and the impact it had on the spread of Christianity. It is also a time to celebrate the rich cultural heritage of the Armenian people and their contributions to the wider Christian community. Overall, the holiday is a celebration of faith, perseverance, and the power of religious conviction. It serves as a reminder of the important role that religious leaders like Gregory the Illuminator have played in shaping the course of history and inspiring future generations to follow in their footsteps. On this day, in 1895, Dane Rudyard, French-American astrologer, author and composer, d. 1985, was born. Dane Rudyard was a name synonymous with the world of astrology, music and literature. He was a pioneer in the field of modern transpersonal astrology, leaving behind a legacy that continues to inspire and guide many. Born Daniel Chenvier in France, he later adopted the name Dane Rudyard and moved to the United States, where he spent most of his life. Rudyard was a multifaceted personality, with a passion for music, writing and astrology. He was a prolific author, penning several books on astrology, including The Astrology of Personality and The Lunation Cycle. His works were not limited to astrology alone, as he also composed music and wrote poetry. His compositions were often described as modernist and experimental, reflecting his innovative approach to art. Rudyard's contributions to astrology were immense. He was one of the first astrologers to explore the psychological and spiritual dimensions of the zodiac signs, introducing the concept of the lunation cycle which emphasized the role of the moon in shaping human behavior and emotions. His work on the astrology of personality helped to bridge the gap between astrology and psychology, making it more accessible to a wider audience. Rudyard's impact on the world of astrology was not limited to his writings. He was also an accomplished teacher and lecturer, traveling extensively to share his knowledge and insights with others. He was a popular figure at astrology conferences and workshops, known for his engaging and thought-provoking presentations. Despite his many achievements, Rudyard remained humble and unassuming. He was known for his kindness and generosity, always willing to share his knowledge and expertise with others. His passion for astrology and music was contagious, inspiring many to explore these fields further. In conclusion, Dane Rudyard was a true pioneer in the field of astrology, leaving behind a rich legacy that continues to inspire and guide many. His contributions to the field of music and literature are also noteworthy. His passion, dedication and generosity have made a lasting impact on the world, and his work continues to be relevant and inspiring to this day. We remember the life of Moshe Feinstein, American Orthodox rabbi in Pisk, born 1895, who died on this date in 1986. 
Moshe Feinstein was a world-renowned Orthodox Jewish rabbi, scholar, and Pisk who made significant contributions to the field of Jewish law and left an indelible mark on contemporary Orthodox Judaism. Born in Russia in 1895, Feinstein was educated in Jewish law from a young age and demonstrated exceptional brilliance and dedication to his studies. He went on to become one of the most respected and influential Jewish legal authorities of the 20th century, serving as president of the Union of Orthodox Rabbis, chairman of the Council of the Moetzes Gedele HaTorah of the Agudath Israel of America, and head of Mesoth Tiferet Jerusalem in New York. Feinstein's expertise in Jewish law was unparalleled, and he was known for his ability to provide insightful and nuanced rulings on complex cases that had not been explicitly addressed by previous authorities. His rulings were often referenced in contemporary rabbinic literature, and his influence extended far beyond the Orthodox Jewish community. He was a sought-after speaker and teacher, and his lectures and writings continue to be studied and revered by scholars and laypeople alike. Feinstein's impact on Jewish law and tradition was not limited to his role as a pisk. He was also a passionate advocate for Jewish education and was instrumental in establishing yeshivas and other educational institutions in the United States and Israel. His dedication to preserving and promoting Jewish tradition was unwavering, and he worked tirelessly to ensure that future generations would have access to the rich heritage of Jewish knowledge and wisdom. Despite his many accomplishments and accolades, Feinstein remained humble and kind throughout his life. He was known for his warmth and compassion, and his door was always open to those seeking guidance and advice. His legacy continues to inspire and guide the Jewish community to this day, and his contributions to Jewish law and tradition will be remembered for generations to come. In conclusion, Moshe Feinstein was a remarkable individual who left an indelible mark on the Jewish community. His exceptional knowledge, wisdom, and dedication to Jewish law and tradition have had a profound impact on contemporary Orthodox Judaism, and his legacy continues to inspire and guide scholars and laypeople alike. His life's work serves as a testament to his unwavering commitment to preserving and promoting Jewish heritage, and his memory will be cherished for generations to come. This was Today in History, an AI podcast. Brought to you by Decor Studios. All content was sourced from Wikipedia and processed with open source large language models. This podcast is released under Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 4.0 International License. Thank you so much for listening. Talk to you tomorrow.